Hey guys, what's up? Raf here with Castle 14 Photography. For today I have 5 tips on composition that will up your landscape photography game instantly. So let's get to it. Now, before I start talking about rules and guidelines, let me make it clear that they are just that, guidelines. Photography is an art form, there's no rules in art. That being said, I believe there is value in having the most important rules or guidelines in the back of your head if only to know when and why to break them. The first tip though isn't as much a rule or a guideline as it is a fact that the best light for 99% of your landscape images will be around sunrise or sunset. I'll said it before and I'll say it again. You have to get up early or stay out late if you want that beautiful light light in your scenes. I prefer to shoot at sunrise because that early in the morning the air is still clean and fresh and you have the place all to yourself because nobody's crazy enough to get out of bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. A good indicator to know if the uh, sun is low enough is to check the shadows. If your shadow is twice as long as your object is high, go for it. Hey, but that's not composition related, I hear you say. Okay, and maybe you're right. But the impact on your picture is so big that it's definitely worth mentioning here. So. Okay, tip number two. Simplicity. We want to convey a message or a story with our photography. So the less distracting elements you have in your frame that draw attention away from your subject, the easier it's going to be for your viewer to understand what you're trying to tell them. For example, it's going to be a lot easier to find a working composition for a seascape sunset than it's going to be for a cityscape sunset. Just because of the number of distracting elements that sneak into your frame, a city is full of them. But standing on the beach looking over the sea at the sunset, there is none. That composition will be only about the sunset, no explanation necessary. This is the complexity or the simplicity of a scene. In the composition we make of that scene are a lot of different ways to simplify our image. The first one is always framing, what to put in the frame and what to leave out. By changing your camera position or angle or zooming in or out, you can include and exclude certain elements in the frame. You can draw attention to your subject by focusing on your subject and let the background get soft. You can draw attention to your subject by only lighting your subject or wait for the light to fall on it just right. Another great way to draw attention to your subject brings me to tip number three. Leading lines and S-curves. Use lines and curves to lead the eye up to your subject. You'll find lines and curves and shapes all over, but you have to learn to look for it because they're not always obvious. When you arrive in a location, walk around a little. See if there's a more interesting view on your subject. Maybe there's a road or a stream leading up to your subject that you can use as a foreground element. And that's tip number four. Foreground elements. The biggest drawback of photography is the fact that a beautiful 3D scene is rendered into a mere two-dimensional image. And the depth that we experience in real life is lost. But we can create the illusion of depth where there is none, by using strong elements in the foreground. A photo is usually built up out of three stages, a background, a midground and a foreground. The background and midground are typically not a problem, but it's the foreground element that tends to be forgotten a lot. For example, you're staring at a beautiful mountain peak lit by a ray of light through a hole in the clouds. That's your background. In the valley in front of the mountain is a beautiful lake that reflects the colors of the sky. That's your midground. So you whip out that camera and start pounding that shutter, right? Right, because that light and that moment can be gone in mere seconds. As soon as you have your safe shot, then you start looking around for an interesting foreground element. It can be anything, a rock or a flower or that stream or road we talked about just now. Something close to you and preferably something that tells the viewer something more about your subject. The last step I have is the biggest cliché. The rule of thirds. It says to divide your frame into nine equal parts and put your subject on one of the cross points or put your horizon on one of the horizontal lines. And I have to admit that it is in fact a valid point when it comes to composition. 
But to call it a rule, in my opinion, is a bit over the top. There are tons of reasons why you would derive from this rule. For example, when you're shooting a reflection, it's perfectly okay to put your horizon in the middle of the frame. Then it works. Like I said in the beginning of the episode, photography is an art form and there are no rules in art. But I believe there is value in having the more important rules and guidelines in the back of your head. If only to know when and why to break them. So now it's up to you guys to apply these steps to your photography. Watch yourself get better, go out there and practice. You're not getting any better by watching me babble here. So thank you for watching, hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one guys. Bye.